the if you look at the Chinese economy, the crackdown on corruption has clearly had a big impact, a much bigger impact than people thought. Um, the Chinese are now trying to defend the consumer. They're not so much worried about defending manufacturers, and they're also not much worried about defending construction. So if you, even though Chinese growth is around 7%, the actual growth in demand for steel is negative. And that means iron ore prices aren't going north anytime soon. Um, I think for the first time for 10 years, I, I sort of don't believe their data. They're saying it's 7% per annum. Um, and all the partial data we see is a lot weaker than that. But they do have a hell of a lot of policy ammunition. Um, they are currently got a cash rate, effectively a lending rate of 4.85. Uh, they've cut it twice in the last month. And they've also changed their reserve ratio. In layman's terms, basically changing the reserve ratio by 1%, which is what they've done, adds about 12% to credit growth in terms of potential credit. So they're stimulating the economy a lot. Um, at this stage, I think they still will get something like seven, but that'll be because they'll keep cutting rates. And then India's probably looking pretty well. So these are sort of the better economies, the ones that I sort of don't like. Um, Europe has started a bit better, but it's still um, pretty, pretty mixed. Everybody's talking about um, Greece. First thing I'd say about Greece is it's a smaller economy in size than Queensland. Okay, so it's not big. Um, in context, what the quantitative easing that they're about to start or they just started is one and a half trillion. What Greece is arguing about in the next three months is eight billion. These are different. The other economies around Europe don't look anywhere near as bad as they did three or four years ago. The, um, the exposure of banks to Greek debt has gone from over 200 billion to less than 20 in the last four years. So nobody has any exposure. So if Greece leaves, and I don't know whether they will or won't, um, if they leave, it won't or it's very unlikely to have the sort of flow-on effects that you get a run in Portugal, you get a run in Spain, you get a run in Italy, which is what the previous thing was all about. It wasn't Greece, it was always knock-on effects. The only problem you have, of course, is that whilst it doesn't have any direct effects, it might scare the troops. In other words, you're sitting around, you're saying, what the hell's going on with Greece? Is it about to blow up? I just, I won't spend so much now, I won't invest so much, and I'll sit on my hands. That's sort of the issue. Uh, and you see initially that the equity markets went down. The markets are not pricing for a problem in Greece at all. So that's just basically not there. Um, Japan is basically not doing very well. Um, they're, they're in another QE phase, a quantitative easing, printing money. Uh, and I think they'll be lucky to get 1% growth this year. Non-Japan Asia is struggling because it's trade and Latin America people aren't talking about, but basically it's in a major recession. So you add up the world, you see really mixed stories all over the place. The big sort of headline story recently has been Greece. I think the more important story for both Australia and New Zealand is actually China, because that's the one that's been more important recently.